Tazepatide, the hottest medication in type 2 diabetes and weight loss, with some people losing more than 20% body weight with it. But here's the big question. What happens to all that weight loss if you stop taking the medication? The answer to that and more comes from scientific data that's being presented this week in Germany, where the world's leading diabetes specialists are meeting for their annual European conference. And joining them are our very own Patrick and Amma. And as they make their way to Germany, here's their five minute preview with everything you need to know about this scientific breaking news. Hi, it's uh, Patrick and Amar from the uh, Goggle Docs, just uh, giving you one of the highlights uh, for the upcoming ESD conference in Hamburg. So today we just want to cover one trial which is coming out, which is called Surmount 4. So Amar, tell us what Surmount 4 is all about. Yes, yeah, so Surmount 4 is a trial looking at tizepatide, which is a, GIP, G, a GLP molecule, Encretin, which we've heard a lot about over the last few years, but certainly more so this year. Surmount 4 is essentially a trial looking to see about the durability of, of tizepatide. So it's a 36-week open-label initial part of the trial where they're giving everyone tizepatide. Then there's a 52-week extension where they randomize people to either placebo or tizepatide to see what effect that would have down the line. And actually, there is some, some, some already, we have some results out from, from, from the company, actually, don't we, Patrick? Um, would you like to tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, so um, as you said, it's just headline numbers, but we got it was in that first 36 weeks. It's about 21.7%, if I remember, mean weight loss. Um, and then after that period of time, when they're randomized either to continue with that tizepatide or um, uh, go on to placebo, um, you got a further, I think it was 6.7 weight reduction um, compared to, wait for it, 14.8%. Uh, percent regain or thereabouts anyway. So it looks like you've got this quite significant regain really of that weight loss, but not completely. So I suppose what are you looking when it comes to the full results? What what level of detail do we need to be seeing? Yes, I think we've got the headline data, which is probably the key thing everyone's looking at, isn't it? That weight gain, the weight regain. I mean, this is a, patient, a population of people with obesity. So again, we know it's a chronic condition that requires probably long-term treatment management. Um, and this is quite, this highlights perhaps that what I'm looking forward to is really that regain side of things. Um, how soon did that happen? And, and we know it, it, was, it, was blind, it was blinded for that period of time, but we know that most people would guess once they're off treatment, you know, when they're getting that weight regain, that they're not on that treatment. So again, what does that mean to drop out? How soon does that drop out over a period of time? Um, and what implications that might have in the real world setting, really, uh, when we do consider this for our patients? Um, I think that interests me. Obviously, there'll be the other parameters they'll look at, looking at, you know, lipid lowering, all the kind of secondary outcomes, looking at blood pressure, looking at that side of things. Uh, again, that'll be interesting to kind of identify perhaps other possible um, areas to look at. I think for me, that's the main area. Um, side effect profiles, treatment persistence, and all those kind of key things. But for me, that, I think that, that that regain side of things is probably the most interesting. So I, I guess what this also um, makes me consider is really, um, you know, where do we go in a practical setting for, for our patients? Because we will get patients who uh, perhaps may not take it all the time, the medication, or may take it. And, and again, that persistence uh, is something to always consider. And we've talked about this before, I think, in previous videos for um, GLP-1s and higher strength GLP-1s. Does this, do we have to consider things such as pulse treatment or you know, drug holidays? And we see that in other molecules and other classes and other specialties. What about in the setting of diabetes and obesity, actually, not diabetes, obesity? Do we need to consider the, you know, the, 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 the fact that people need to be lifelong treatment? Do we have to make it a bit easier for them? And, and this is something I guess, Patrick, you might know a bit more about with from primary care, from you know, patient persistence on medications. What do you think about this whole management of obesity in the setting of pulse treatments, potentially? I think it's really interesting. I mean, I, I think I can certainly see it from a patient perspective they may want to be off these treatments at certain times you know it it, it, um, it does take probably some of the pleasure of, of eating which for a lot of our patients is um, they don't like um, losing that so having your cake and eat it I suppose in a sense that you can have your cake maybe at Christmas with a with a break from treatment and then go back on to treatment um, I, I suppose what we really need is a clinical trial which actually tests that out, doesn't it? Because uh, if this is, it doesn't test that this out really. It just says that once you've stopped the treatment, the weight goes back. But it does raise a whole load of questions. You think we we'll get it? That group. I hope we do because I think in I certainly thought leaders. We had this conversation in a previous video, which we'll we'll probably highlight. But um, there's uh, Professor John Wilding uh, up at um, Liverpool, one of the um, 
uh, great thinkers, really, I suppose, in these sorts of therapies and a clinician himself. So, and, and certainly he suggested that as a way forward. Um, at the end of the day, I suppose one of the attractions over the medicines that we're talking about in terms of these bariatric medicines is the turn off, turn on, which you can't obviously quite get with bariatric surgery. That's a sort of a bit like that sort of saying, it's for life, not just for Christmas. Um, although that was talking about a pet dog, uh, which is slightly different. Uh, but anyway, but yeah, so I think it's, uh, I see it as a really interesting way forward. But yeah, we do need the right trials. But these, um, but why not? Why not have these trials? Uh, I think the pharmaceutical industry do live in the real world. They must know that there's a place for these things. Certainly there's a lot of money in this industry. Um, uh, so, you know, you would think there's the investment to actually test out these um, uh, theories to you know before they go into clinical practice we like performing evidence-based practice after all well excellent we'll hear more about that at ESD so stay tuned and uh, thank you for joining us